um, that can be attended to so basically an event is defined as what uh, a start and end in a value so we event has a start day uh, end day which means if i do an event then i will do it from start day to end day and the value earned by attending that event is this event value which i have in the third argument of this event array now um it just says uh, multiple things now we are having okay a number k itself which just says that okay maximum number of events which i can attend so i can attend at max k event now what i want to do is i want to return the maximum sum of values so values is this sum which is in the every event itself and uh, that I can receive by attending all these events and you know that I can attend at max k events now at just one note please mention it because please remember it sorry that um, the end day is inclusive which means um, that I cannot attend two events where one of them starts and the other one ends at the same day which means that uh, you know it start its end its value right so if the one events end at two so i cannot start with one event starting at two itself because it will in the picture it will look something like this one two a event ending at two even starting at two so you know that it is overlapping right so i can start with the next event starting from three and not two so please make sure this thing it's very 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 important now as we look at the example itself it's very 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 clear okay the one event is this uh one event is this one event is this right so ultimately if i just want to maximize my value i will just take this event which is having value four this event because it is having value 4 i can take at max 2 events so i can have both of them and for sure the value earned will be 7 which is the maximum possible and both of these are non overlapping so by this i can get the maximum value which is 7 now okay uh, as we see this picture itself we can get to know one thing okay i have multiple such events now out of them i will choose a few of them ultimately in the last which means a few of them will be taken and the remaining will not be taken because it won't it it won't give me that value or maybe they are overlapping so out of all a few i will take and a few i will ignore now as i am seeing the picture itself and i know okay a few i will take a few i will ignore so one thing can come easily in my mind is i have two options either i can take an event or i can ignore an event as soon as this picture came in take an event ignore an event simply it will just infer us think of in the knapsack way which means we will write the recursion and then ultimately we'll say okay bro um, it's a recursion and we know that take it leave it it's an it's a kind of an abstract problem so for sure and that's the reason in the last i specifically showed you that if you had not watched the deep intuition building playlist in this intuition is being built it's not the standard way okay i will teach you an abstract no i will teach you how to think of okay if this is an abstract problem or not right and specifically in these you will see that happening so that's the reason i specifically mentioned let please go and watch that now coming back to now you know it's an abstract problem it will take it now it will leave it now as we know it so people have the biggest issue in building the recursion itself now you know in the start see now i will teach you the flow of how to think of a recursion that okay Aaron, i know the recursion is being applied but i cannot build the recursion by myself please don't think of building recursion directly think of what is happening what we what you require now when i say take it when i say leave it now you will be taking what taking an event now you have an array of events right see please think in picture you have you have to take what you have to take an event event you have to in and out of all the events and all the events as in you have an array of events where event of i event of i2 and like so on and so forth so basically you have to go at every event itself so for sure i can have an index to every event I have an event array where every event is something like this. Now I have to go at every event, which means if I take it or I, if, even if I ignore it, so I have to take what an event itself, right? So take an event, I will represent that okay by the position or by an index, anything you want. So if I take this event, then what ultimately I am taking, I am taking its value. So if I am at this position event and I am taking it, so I'm taking its value, which is at the second index of this position event. Now, okay, it is I'm taking it, but is it done? Am I done to take just one event? No, I have to take the entire thing. So I will just go and ask my recursion. Hey, bro, I took this event, which is at the position. Now go and say what is the maximum you can bring because for short sure, i'm just reading the question itself what is the maximum you can bring i'm asking my recursion and i'm not writing exactly recursion i'm just thinking okay what kind of something i can write in my recursion i just go and ask him hey bro you will add you will add something as the value of this event because you are 
taking this event and ultimately i go and ask gajan bro hey bro whatsoever you can bring me from the next index whatsoever next index you will have bring me anything which is the maximum i can get but you also know that i have to, i have grabbed one event so for sure remaining number of events are nothing but k minus 1 so by this by this just making this thing i get to know okay my dp states are one thing is position other thing is k because as i go on and take every position every index or every of this event then as i am going on taking it my k is being reduced so the impact as soon as i'm taking it or leaving it the impact will be on the position and on the k so i know these two things will be impacted so it is in my in my arguments of my recursion and for sure as i am taking the position next i can grab off is at the index i and that can be anything which is a possible now as you go are in can i just go and start from the position plus 1 simple why you take the i why not position plus 1 because if you take the position then start for the next position but i will say wait hold on hold on hold on hold on if you take this event then it was a condition to take the next event it should start off it should start off with ending like it should be more than if the if it is let's say 2 so it should start off with 3 or more so that is one thing that you have to take you have to take care that okay this i is the next possible index you can take but the next possible index i can start from going on in my array and see here i did a position plus 1 which means if i have the events like this one event next event next event next event so if i am at this position let's say let's say okay if i am at this position then i am going on and check, checking for the remaining positions in the right why not in the left because ultimately it just means earlier i would have sorted my entire events so that it is sorted in the ascending order of their start and if they are have the start same then for sure it will be sorted in the ascending order of their ends so by this i will only go and check for the remaining part if you don't want to sort it no worries go and check for the entire array again and again and it will just keep on repeating and you will never issue an answer so now you know okay i will just go and reduce by shrink my size from position plus 1 to n but in that also i will start from that event which is having which is having my events of i of 0 which means my start my start of that event which is of the ith index it should be more than the end of my current position which is the current position of one it is the end it should be more it should be more not equal it should be more than my start then by this i can easily say and go at this index and start from that index later on because if i taken this position the nearest the nearest index i can take of this is is this i and you see you will see i am just going on going on going on as soon as i will just grab this grab this first i i will simply break this because it i just want okay if i grab this position as an event if i grab this event what is the next nearest event i can look for and start my recursion so by this you know okay you will and see it is something you thought of later firstly we assume okay my recursion will land on to some index after taking it and i will look at that i will look at this index later on let's leave it you can also leave it you can just think of later so please break this in the steps now what if we we leave it simply if you leave it okay you leave the position you leave the event at the position so for sure no value will be added and simply you will start from the next position itself now because no boundation on the next position you can start from the position plus 1 itself so start from the position plus 1 itself and for sure i i never used any of the event so for sure my k will also remain same that is how in this picture up till so far initially we thought okay what to add if we take it if we take it then for sure we go, we got to know what is the arguments what are the arguments which i actually required because i started with the one argument simply position but then as i was taking it i realized okay i need another argument as well which is k with this i realize okay i need to add the value okay i add the value i will go and ask my recursion okay what's the next index you can start off with because it can't be just position plus 1 it needs to be some specific index so i simply go on and find that specific index which is after my position and to get the after i need to sort it first so i just simply went back and in the starting itself i will just sort my entire array down by this you know okay it is a flow that's the reason i specifically told you the flow that okay how to think of recursion problem itself now we just have got the recursive cases 
not base case not anything and not the recurrent return that's the reason start off with actual recursive cases now simply going on and we will start writing the recursion itself now to start writing we just got to know one thing we have to firstly sort my entire events down because you know if you are at position you have to go and look for the next so as to shrink your sizes cool but yeah, you also remember, I'm writing the recursion, but ultimately in the back of my mind, I know I need to memoize this. Why? Because I know it's a massive problem. Cool? Cool. I sorted it. I started with these will remain same. No worries. The main arguments are nothing but index, which is starting by position, represented by position and for sure my K, which I can take any, I can take K events for sure. Uh, in the starting, I can take K. So just like argument, okay, you can take K events. Now comes the base case right when will you stop when will you stop ultimately you know one thing if you see what you have to return is what is the maximum value value will only be added if you have something and no you know the argument is position or a key so any way you're gonna end either at position or a key so if the position has extra, has reached the end it is greater than equal to end which means it has reached the end for sure you cannot take any more event for sure the event will return simply a zero which means the value it will return is a zero you know you have to return the maximum value so if it has reached the end return some minimum thing which will not affect your answer because you know that you were adding you were adding in your answer so return something which will add in your answer and it will also not affect it should be minimum it should not affect your answer and it should be like adding something because you have to add something so either i can return an int minimum because it will not affect my answer because i want maximum but no it should not affect my answer also because i am adding so i'll simply return my zero that's the reason see now in this case you know okay i have to return something minimum because i have reached out of my bounds and i'm taking maximum so i can do int minimum also but i i, I realized i'm not taking anything as this comma this i am adding it so i should add something which, you, which should not affect my answer and it should be minimum so i simply added a zero that is you know okay as you have reached the end simply return a zero or if you have no option to take which means you, you cannot take any event which means k equal to zero simply return a zero that's how you got the base case now simply as we told off that if we take this position so the next index i which i can take is simply going on and checking okay if the end is more than the start simply take this particular index i which is saying okay ultimately rn you have two options either leave it which means start from the position plus one k will remain same or take this event which means the value will be added of this and simply going on with the i with the i which we have grabbed above and simply have, as we have reduced one so simply k minus one and taking the maximum out of these two options that is simply returning my actual so you know that you have to return the maximum value now ultimately you know it's a recursion you have to memoize this simple three-step memoization initialize your dp with n plus one comma k plus one before actually going on to the recursive part just to simply ask hey bro have you found it which means if it is not going to myself you have found it simply return that and before returning simply put that in the dp that's how you can simply do it but 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 if you look at the complexity is n into k into n but the big question mark in this question is they have given the complexity of simply n into k which is 1 e 6 they have not specifically given what is the n bounded at it can be 1 e 3 also it can be 1 e 5 also it can be 1 e 5 also if it is 1 e 5 it will fail if it is 1 e 3 it might pass if it is 1 e 2 it might pass so if it is 1 e 2 or less it might pass so for sure you if you will try to push it if you if you will try to submit this particular code it is n into k into n because of this particular loop which we are doing in the worst case it can go up till n or itself and the dp is itself the recursion itself is a n into k so for sure for sure in the worst case it can go up to n into k into n n into k is itself 1 e 6 so considering that this is passing in the actual use case it can be either 1 e 2 or something lesser but 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 is it actually good to actually assume this maybe we can optimize it also so yeah it is the first thing which you can tell in the interview but then as you will see okay n is not bounded in the question so we, we are very like we are not sure but still we will try to opt optimize it if we think of optimization what we can optimize we can optimize this no because we know we have it's actual knapsack which it's already optimized we cannot opt optimize it we can maybe think of something in this 
what's happening for sure i'm going on linearly but you also remember one thing in the initially you what i am saying because i was at these events right i am at this position event now i want to go and look for some event i and you also remember that so as to not go back again and again in the entire uh, events array you just sorted it down so that you will only look at the right part but even if sorting it down okay sorting it down and doing a search for the next event sorting searching sorting searching binary search simply if you know it is sorted you have to search for some element more than this particular event simply why not i can simply apply binary search so rather than this which is actually linearly searching i can simply go and apply a binary search for what simply you know one thing if you had an event currently if you take this event which has some start ending at two and it has some value so the next event i can take is i can take a two no i cannot i can take some event starting from this which is more than my actual this particular start so what i can do is i have this entire events one events entire events array i will from this from this particular thing i will go and say hey bro i will make a mask or kind of a, a temporary something like this as two comma int max comma int max and i will go and ask anyone who is more than this value he should come in first so i will go i will do a binary search in this entire events and for sure you remember events is sorted events is sorted i will do and go and do, go and do a binary search and will tell anyone who is more than you you like you saw one thing it was the end i made a temp vector as starting with two but then I also put as int max int max. Why? It can happen that okay, if it is a one, if it is a two, it can happen that okay, as something like this, as something like this, it comes in two and uh, let's say three and three. So if I take as anything int minimum or a zero, then for sure it will come in next. But I know the thing which should come in should be more than two. So and I also know that okay. I can do something as more than two. So I'll take the rest of the argument as int max. So anything which is coming in more than, and I'm, I'm taking upper bound, which is more than value. Anything which is com uh, coming more than two int max, int max will actually start from three or above. Or you can also take it as three, which means uh, if, this is a, if this is a start, you can take it as start plus one, int min, int min. And then you, you can do a lower bound so that anything greater than equal to this will start from this. So anyway, you can take it in this example. I just took this as a start. So I take this start into max into max and did an upper bound to get a next higher value. And next higher value will always start from three and something, something. So I will take this and simply get this by simply using a binary search, which means I will make a temp as simple that that end, which I showed you, it's an end, right? It's an end and into max into max. So when I'll do an upper bound, upper bound on this particular temp on this particular temp i'll simply get the index but you also remember the range which you will start from because you know okay it is if it is a position the next range you can start from is actually from the position plus one right although you can take it as the entire uh entire array itself from zero to end but yeah it's just you are making the range shorter in the question itself so it may be much it, it might be a little bit faster so what i can do is i can start from the search from the position plus one itself so in this you will see that okay we started from the position plus one as the search range although it won't hamper anything in your code you can simply start from events or begin also because it just simply a slight a very slight more a, a very slight optimization very slight cool by this you can simply get the index by simply using a binary search rather than using a linear search and by this what will happen is you can simply modify this code in this where you were searching linearly now you will search do a binary search and by this you can simply get the answer and for sure you must remember you have sorted already by this a simple rather than n a login factor will come in picture and for sure even if n is 1 e 6 or maybe 1 e 5 still it will be very 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 less thus it will for sure for sure for sure pass but in this example of lead code currently both the approaches which means o of n into k into n and also o of n into k into log n are both passing and the biggest uh, you know the kind of a surprise is you will see that the runtime of n into k into n with the it shows now okay it is faster than 
all these numbers of all these percentage it it is showing much faster in that o of n into k into n wala and it is showing a bit slower but yeah actually technically it is much faster o of n into k into log n1 cool by this you can simply solve it the code is down below and for sure please go and utilize the intuition building playlist it is not your actual going on and studying dp it is actually going on and building the intuition of firstly how to think it's a dp problem and again if it's a it is a dp problem then how to think of the base cases the recursion all that stuff so please go and watch it thank you so much for watching see you on another video take care bye bye